How do you uninstall a mini split? In today's video, we're going to do a step by step process of how to install a mini split. Maybe you need to remove your mini split and move it to a different location. Maybe you're doing an upgrade and you're installing another mini split that's more efficient than the mini split that you have. Or you just don't like the mini split, you're tired of it, and you just want to get rid of it. Or you're moving houses, you want to take it with you. Today's video is all about uninstalling mini splits. If you haven't seen my videos on how to install, I've got several videos on how to install. I'll put those all down in the link in the description. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. This is Taddy Digest. I'm Tad. Let's get started. This is the outdoor unit for this mini split system. And this mini split system is a closed loop system that contains refrigerant. Before you can remove this mini split system, you either have to recover the refrigerant out of the system or you have to do something known as pump down operation, where we pump the refrigerant into the outdoor unit before we remove the outdoor unit. The first step is we need to, if the system is operational, perform something known as a pump down. If this system is not operational, meaning you cannot get it to come on, then you'll have to recover, which we're going to go over. So we're going to go ahead and prepare to do a pump down, and I'm going to talk about how to use a recovery machine. Let's go over some tools that you may need. First, you may need a Phillips screwdriver or a drill with a Phillips bit. You may need a set of Allen wrenches. You may need a adjustable wrench. You may need a set of gauges with a adapter to connect from your quarter inch to your 5 16 to hook onto your mini split service access port. You may need a recovery tank as well as a recovery machine. All right, let's jump on in and take off the cover to our refrigerant connections. Use our adjustable wrench. Take off our service valve caps and our cap for our service access fitting. Now let's take our quarter inch to 5 16 adapter. Whoa. Be sure and use a good fitting. It looks like I might need to replace this fitting. Make sure you use gloves because refrigerant burns can hurt and it can be dangerous. Now I'm gonna take the blue hose from my gauge set and I'm gonna connect it to the quarter inch by 5 16 fitting. Now we're able to read the pressure of our system and it looks like it is 224, that's our standing pressure. Now, if my system is non-operational, then I would need to take my yellow hose straight to my recovery ma machine. to the port labeled in. Here's the recovery machine that I use. I've got a full video on how to use a recovery machine and recover refrigerant from a system. If you wanna learn more, go check out that video in the link in the description. But basically, I would take another hose and I would go from the out port, the port labeled out, and then I would go to a recovery tank. I would open the tank, turn on the machine and open my valves and I would allow this machine to pull that refrigerant out of the system into a tank. Then once the refrigerant gauges say zero, then I would be able to take and remove this system because I just performed a recovery of that refrigerant. Now, since our system's operational, we're gonna go ahead and perform a pump down. Now, to perform the pump down correctly, we need to use our Allen tool and we need to close our liquid line service valve. How do we know which one's the liquid line? Well, that's our smaller line. We've got a larger line, which is our vapor or our gas line, and we've got a smaller line that is our liquid line. So we're gonna find the right size, which is right here, and we're gonna close this. You gotta close it all the way before we turn the unit on. Now that it's closed, I'm gonna go ahead and place it right here in the other service valve for our suction line. 
Now, you'll notice the pressure on our gauge set is 230. That's our standing pressure, right? Now let's go inside. Let's turn the system on. Now, if you take your remote controller and you put it on the cooling mode and you turn the temperature down, then the system is going to run in the cooling mode and it's going to pump that refrigerant into our outdoor unit or our condenser. When we close that liquid line, that means we're no longer going to send refrigerant through the liquid line to our indoor coil. And since the refrigerant travels from the liquid line into the indoor coil, from the suction line back to the outdoor unit, we're pumping all that refrigerant into that outdoor unit. We should see our gauge and our pressure dropping. Now you can see the gauge and the pressure dropping. See it says 20, 15, 10, 9, 8, 7, 0. When it gets near zero or at zero, then you want to close your other valve because all of the refrigerant has been pumped inside the outdoor unit. Then you'll want to stop operation using the wireless remote controller or just pull the disconnect. We do not want the system running without refrigerant. Since our system is solar powered, we want to disconnect these MC4 connectors as well. That way we don't have PV power coming into our unit, keeping it running. If you've got the tool to remove the MC4 connectors, great. If not, just use some needle nose pliers. Now, when we remove our fitting and our gauges, we should not hear any refrigerant because there's none left inside the line sets. The next step is turn off your power. So if you got a breaker, turn off the breaker, pull the disconnect, and if you've got a solar powered mini split, disconnect the PV at the unit, those MC4 connectors. Now that we've disconnected the power, we've waited 10 or 15 minutes. This is a mini split, so it has a capacitor bank on the inverter board that trickles the charge after 10 or 15 minutes. It's safe. What we want to do first is remove our indoor unit. But to do that, we need to disconnect from the indoor to outdoor unit, the power cable. So where is that located? We lift up our cover where our filters are. We take our cover for the electrical connections off. And then you can see here's where our power cable connects into that indoor unit. Now, some indoor units have two power cables. One's a signal cable, one's a power cable. This one just has a power cable. So we're going to take and remove our wires. This one is one, two, three, and ground. Now we can pull those wires out. Oh, our ground has a ring terminal. I like it when spade connections are used and ring terminals are used. Now our wires are loose. So let's go outside now and disconnect our line sets. So I need to get to my line set connections from the indoor unit to the line sets. So I got to take off this cover. So I'm going to take off this cover and expose those connections. Cover's been removed. Now I'm going to cut these zip ties here and then we'll be able to get to our connectors. There's our connector for our liquid line and there's our connector for our suction line. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our decoupling rings off. There's a decoupling ring. Now you may not have quick connectors. You may have something called flare connections. So you won't have decoupling rings. And it'll be honestly probably easier uh, to take those flare connections loose uh, than these quick connectors, but it's still the same principle. Also drain tube. If your drain tube is glued, uh, it's got a connector on it, maybe like a hose clamp or some tape. Take that off so that it's loose and free. Uh, if you've got a frog, just say hi, uh, wish it farewell, and you know, maybe don't bother it. But we can take now our uh, wire and pull it through. See, it's, it's disconnected. So to take our connectors here, just I'm going to have to put that. See, you know what? I'm trying to do a job here, but 
you're going to respect your space. So now take your adjustable wrenches, or if you want to use uh, adjustable pliers, you can do that. I'm going to use the wrenches. We're going to take and loosen up these connectors so that we can take them apart. Remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. You don't want to over tighten and break these connectors. May take a moment, but once you get them loosened up enough, then you can just remove the connection with your hand. So there's our liquid line. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing with our suction line. All right, now that we've loosened up our suction line connector from our line set to our indoor coil, we're gonna go ahead and loosen it up by hand. And there it is. Now, this is the part where you cannot take the indoor unit off the wall unless you bend these connections up to where they're straight. And if you've got to reuse this unit, be careful when you do this. You don't want to kink the lines. Now I've got a bunch of silicone and this silicone really needs to be removed. So I'm going to remove this silicone and then we're going to be able to take off our indoor unit. Before removing the indoor unit, you may want to take a shot back and put your hose right here on the end of the drain line. Why? Because the pan inside for the indoor unit may be full of water. So when we go to remove that indoor unit, you may have water pouring in your floor. If you want to avoid that, just use a shop vac, put it on the end right here, and then turn on the shop vac and clear that hose and maybe the pan. Side note, if you've got a multi-zone mini split system where you have several indoor heads, you may want to turn each head into the cooling operation. That way you have a successful pump down. So that's just a side note, but I wanted to include that in today's video. Now that we've removed our wire and we've removed our connectors for our line sets connecting this indoor unit, and we've disconnected our drain, we should be able to take and pull out from the bottom a little bit and then lift up. And this will get us off of the hooks on our mounting bracket. And then we can pull straight back. And when we do that, we can take our indoor unit off the wall. So now our indoor unit is removed. We can set this to the side. And we can take our mounting plate off the wall. To take the mounting bracket off the wall for the indoor wall mount air handler, you may need a Phillips screwdriver, or you may need to use a drill with a Phillips bit. I used these little deck screws, so I'll be using the star bit. Uh, but we can go ahead and go to the next step in our process. Now let's disconnect our line sets from our outdoor unit. So I'm going to take out the decoupling rings. Pretty simple. And now just use our crescent wrench. If you've got flare connectors, you're just going to remove them. like so. Super simple. May take a minute, but that's okay. One eternity later. All right, we've got them loosened up. I'm going to go ahead and remove both the liquid line and the suction line connector. Now our line sets are disconnected. Now we're going to take off the cover for our electrical connections. So this is for removing our AC power, our L1, L2, and ground and our power cable for our indoor unit. So here is in. You may want to use a Phillips screwdriver for this. N and L or L1 and L2. And then we've got one, two, three, and ground. And make sure the power is off for this. This can be very dangerous if you don't use the proper precautions. All right, that's how you remove your mini split. This was a solar powered mini split by EG4. If you want to learn more about this mini split, you want to look at an install guide, or you want a discount on this type of mini split, I'll put links to all of that down in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know what it was down in the comments. If you got a question, remember questions can lead to new content. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell 
ding, so you know what I'm doing. You want more videos like this? Go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got hundreds of videos of live experience as a technician in the field to help you be a better technician. You've been watching Taddy Digest. This is HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.